Good morning, folks. Couple plasma filaments to begin a day of terrestrial events in cosmic science. We're starting with our star and let's switch from this ionized helium view to ionized iron over at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last day, an exercise in patiently watching a huge coronal hole trapes across the Earth facing heliographic longitudes. Bottom left, you can actually already see the next one incoming too. No breaks here with the openings. These are, of course, in contrast to the complete lack of sunspots, different ionization level of iron here, and we've got no bright active umbral cores. With the coronal holes, we watch for intensified plasma streams in the solar wind, and thus far, we've had none. No telemetry exceeding normal ambient range here, despite a bit of variability. The coronal hole facing us has about another 24 to 36 hours for its stream to arrive, and in the meantime, any further drop in geomagnetic unrest will take us near cosmic ray health concerns for being too low. Up next, folks, the West Pacific, specifically the equatorial range from Tonga across to Indonesia, has taken months of four shocks in just the last 10 days. Remember that long-term Earth averages about one magnitude seven event every 20 days, and it's been over 100 without one now, more than five times the statistically expected waiting period. And also remember, your real-time forecasting tools are at quakewatch.net, and just anecdotally in the meantime, the West Pacific has been destabilizing. Jumping slightly further west to the Indian subcontinent, excessive rains have caused more flash flooding to add to the seasonal monsoon total, at least 13 dead in this one, on top of over 150 animals. The story is not too dissimilar in Cairo. The Egyptian inundation came after their rains lasted less than one hour. Looking ahead to the western storm lines in Europe, especially in France, they have major flash flood risk written all over them, eyes on wherever those storms decide to fall today. And if you heard about a cold wave coming to the U.S., your ears absolutely work properly, and here's the guilty party. Jet stream dip to settle in and persist for days, allowing Arctic chill to slide down into the trough. That'll be fun, hey? Let's go to space and chalk another point up for the timeline problems of mainstream cosmology, while also chalking one up for dusty plasma. We know that massive galaxies, massive quasars, and galaxy clusters are seen coming together too early in the cosmos for the Big Bang to properly explain them. There just wasn't enough time for them to happen in their theoretical models. Well, here, we not only find another example of a mega-monster galaxy early in the cosmos, but it was previously invisible, hiding behind dust. This not only touches the timeline problem, but they say that the dust is likely hiding billions of these monsters in deep space, which is a ton of galactic plasma and intergalactic dust to account for in the models that has not been there before. Let's move on to Supernova 1987A. We are just over 30 years since first light of the nova arrived at Earth, and its dynamic behavior has been captured recently by Hubble. It is still changing its look by the month, and the paper link below has the entire sequence, including those most recent processed images. To the question of why we don't see more nova in the cosmos, think about just how much this will have changed in another 30 years. Many nova simply won't present a visually obvious signature just a century after they go boom. Let's swing back around to cosmology, but focus on our own galaxy. A new study has done a detailed examination of the vertical position of the solar system, and while many know that the Milky Way is 100,000 light years across, it's only about 1,000 light years thick, or tall as a disk. That's about 300 parsecs. And since we have a galactic equator, that puts about 150 parsecs of galaxy to the north, and 150 parsecs of galaxy to the south of the equator. They say that Earth is somewhere between 2 parsecs south and 32 parsecs north. Their best guess is 15 parsecs north, consistent with other studies that suggest we're already well north of the equator. But within that range, we're basically riding the central sheet, which does tie back into the nova question of what happens when the galactic current sheet hits our solar system. Remember, the Sun's current sheet hits Earth every two weeks. It's orbiting 26 times faster than we do around the Sun. It causes electromagnetic disruptions at Earth, and the galactic version inflicts that disruption on the stars. Folks, that was both cosmology and cosmic disaster tied together. Both of those movies are linked below, along with the climate forcing movie, which has catapulted into our top 10 watched videos as of this last week. We greatly appreciate your support. You've got many resources listed for you below on our channel page and at suspiciousobservers.org. 
We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.15 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.